you just oh sorry <laughs> you just saw a little glimpse of what our week at impact was um <clears throat> i would this would be our second year going into it uh, last year i lost my voice on wednesday this year i lost it on monday so we'll see how next year goes <laughs> um but it's it was a great week uh, we had 11 students go to camp, and this was the first year, I think, that we, well, because we've been there two years, so obviously it'd be the first time, that we had, I think, every grade from 6th grade to 12th grade uh, that go to camp, I think. I uh, might be wrong on that, but not sure. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but... Also, just want to let you know that this year we had a little over 800 students that came from all over Georgia to get together and worship God. Like, this camp is amazing. Um, this is only year two. First, the first year I went, I just went with an open mind. I had no idea what it was going to be about. I've always heard of Impact from my uh, previous youth pastor and my mentor. He was like, hey, you need to come to Impact. And I was like, I don't know about that. Um, <clears throat> went last year with the open mind and just to hear the kids' perspective of last year, of how much they love it, how much it really is a family, because that is one thing that they really do install in these kids is about family. Um, the importance of growing together um, and also just to know that there's, there's also one church that drives from Missouri, which is a 15-hour drive just for this camp. Like, it's it's crazy when you think about how much of a importance of a camp is, especially a good one if you're able to find one that these students and the pastors drive 15 hours just for this camp. Um, also, which is another great thing is that there are team leaders that have gone through this camp from sixth grade all the way to their senior year, and then they're in college now, and they come back to give their week of summer just to invest in, into these students as someone invested in them. That's how uh, amazing this camp is. Uh, this year, our theme, in actually this year, they did something new. They did a main theme, which was for everyone, and then every grade had a sub-theme, which was dedicated just for their needs things that they were going that things that that age group is going through right now which i thought was pretty neat because in my school i'm in yellow school i was with ninth graders we really got to focus on your on your friends from peer pressure to having a godly uh relationship to to what it means to have godly friends but also that friendship is a gift from god um, and I know we'll have our students come up and they'll be able to tell you about their, uh, their experience from, uh, from their schools. Um, and I know <clears throat> from my, my time just this week, it was really good and just being able to once again uh, to, really, to really be recharged, even though, yes, it was a week of uh, craziness, but through all the craziness that, that happened, uh, I was able to really recharge, to really get back into the Word. And honestly, what was really great is to be encouraged by our, our own students that we had, a, we had, I think, six new ones that went. And the first day, I will tell you, it is a lot. Um, the first day, you are just hit hard with the culture at Impact. And I'll kid you not, if you're not ready, it will scare you because they just, like day one, you're at it. Uh, there's no thing of we're going to slow you into this culture. No, it's uh, day one, you get dropped off, boom, here it is, here's the impact. And you should see the face of our kiddos, especially the new ones. They were just like, what did I get myself into? And uh, by day three, uh, man, they were just right into it. And I know on the last day, Friday, uh, some of them didn't want to leave. They, they wanted to stay. They wish it was longer. And they're looking forward to next year. And I think that is one great thing about camp is that you you walk in scared, but you walk out loving the place, wanting to be back. And I know I have some students uh, from my previous school that they're already counting down the day till uh, next next summer camp. And I'm like, y'all are ready, ready for that? Because I'm already tired. Like, I'm trying to rest, <laughs> trying to get ready for VBS, but which is awesome. Uh, if I could have all of our kids and all of our uh, Team leaders, if y'all could just uh, 
come up and sit in the front row. And whoever wants to come and speak first, I will hand you the mic. Whoever wants to come first, just come up here. Um, and there is four things that they're going to really talk about, uh, just so you all can know. One is what they learned at their school, and that is the uh, sub-theme um, that they had. Then the second question is what they learn from the main theme, that was the one where all 800 plus students got together and we worship. The third one is a simple one is, what was the, what was your favorite thing at camp? And then the last one is, how are you going to be able to uh, apply what you learned this week into your life and into your school? So whoever wants to be first, please come up. Hey guys, um, I enjoyed the pastors that came up and spoke at the school worship and the big worship. Also, it was good to be, be around like-minded people who believe in the same things as me. In yellow school, I learned to go bananas for God, and I need to start saying no instead of allowing people to peer pressure me into doing things. I also learned in big worship that I shouldn't doubt, and I should give my words to God, and I can apply those things in my life by not allowing people to peer pressure me and not to doubt, because I know God's got me. Um, what I learned in my group in camp is that God is always with me, even through the hard times. What I learned in worship is that we need to choose faith, faith even though we don't feel faith. My favorite thing at camp was late night. Uh, what I can apply in school and just in my life is that I can pray for people that are going through stuff or for people that just need someone to pray for them. My favorite part was late night. I learned uh, be a better person. I can apply what I did in camp, in my school, by telling people about God. Hi guys. Um, my favorite part was getting saved. Everybody was super encouraging and friendly to me. <laughs> In Orange School, I learned my identity is not what I do, but it is in what I do in God. I learned to be open and accept everybody, including God, and I learned that I should learn more. I can apply what I did in camp in my school by giving everybody a chance and hearing them all out. I learned in uh, red school is uh, I am the light of the world like a hidden like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden be obedient be kind obedient and be prayerful uh, I, what I learned in uh, impact day one and big worship was I encouraged by what I say I encourage by what I do. I encourage by how I live. God sent me here to impact for a reason. My favorite thing about camp was worship, rec, and my small group because my small groups really pushed me to get my feelings out. And I, I can apply what I learned by calling up my old friends and telling them more about God and what about I learned. Good morning. <laughs> what I learned in small group was how to tell people about the Bible better. I learned how to conquer doubt in, during big worship. And my favorite thing from the week was the people. The people are very good there. They're all great with worshiping God. And then I can help people at my school by going up to them and, and praying for them when they need it. Well, hello.
Hello. Oh, actually, ladies, fellas, Seymours, would y'all like to come up? Madison, Olivia, Gabby, Timothy, the microphone's coming your way, so. One thing I learned in small groups was a community, you know, to express yourself and really get to know other people. Mm, something big I learned in worship was just not to doubt God. And it's okay to question him sometimes, but never doubt him. My favorite thing out of the week is, again, like the community, like everybody was just showing love. There was no hatred to nobody. Everybody was just there having fun. One thing I could use to apply, well, I'm not going to school next year, so one thing I could use it to apply to life is just have fun and praise God. Something I learned in small groups were when people study your habits and they watch you and the way you live, it should give them cloak and clarity, cloak, hope and clarity. Okay. Um, <laughs> something I learned in big worship was um, the enemy wants your head to get into your head because it can't have your heart. Um, my favorite thing this week was also the community of people and just you know, being around other believers that are our age. And one thing I could apply to, from camp to school year is the discipline and just, you know, that. Something I learned in small group was choose faith when you don't feel the faith. Something I learned in big, wor big worship is you doubt yourself, God, and your future, but it's normal and you'll get through it. Something I liked this week was small groups and something I can apply to camp, to, from camp to the school year is being prayerful. Something I learned, learned in um, small group is that you can express yourself and talk about anything that you may not feel comfortable with. Something I learned in big worship is unless you're hold, holding a relationship with God, don't try to hold it with any, anybody else because it's not going to work out. My favorite thing like from the week is really with talking with your family and expressing yourself. And something I could look like use it for school is don't doubt God even if you feel that he's not there with you. All right, here you go. All right, part two. Anyone else? All right. Um, so, yeah, camp is, is awesome. I mean, from the moment we left last year to getting back there this year, uh, I was very much, ex you know, just really excited to be there and was ready to get back. Um, <clears throat> For the, for the adults here, uh, we'll start off by just kind of sharing a little bit about Sunday experience. Uh, because of what Jonathan and I and Marina and any of the other youth leaders uh, went last year, uh, camp is awesome. Let me just tell you that. Camp is awesome. I want to go back and I want to be there forever. I hope these students like that too. The facilities themselves maybe aren't the best, all right? And that's just a part of the camp culture. They've accepted it. It's at Shorter University, guys. It's a Christian private college. I mean, it's not going to get super great. Food is as good as it's going to get. I mean, like, <clears throat> I don't know. N again, it's great. It's a great place. But um, the, the dorms are just, uh. okay, so I bring that up because Sunday night is when all the leaders get there without the students. Um, and obviously, you got to pour into the leaders so that they can pour into the students. Um, but we had a new group 
coming this year, and I'm sure there's many new people, but in my experience, I worked with three new TLs, team leaders, uh, that were coming from St. Simons, drove a lot, uh, to get there to show up to these not so awesome <laughs> facilities. And they were really going through it. They were just, you know, shocked. They were like, what, you know, you know, we paid money to come here, and this is what we're like, what's going on? Like, but then at the same time, they were like, why are so many people here? Why are there like 600 plus students registered? Why are there 150 other TLs coming? They're like, what, you know, <laughs> what's going on? And again, that first day for them was, was tough. So I bring that up because you get to learn through that. Jonathan, myself, again, Marina, we had the same questions last year, and we were like, are we coming back next year? Like, what? Like, I'm like, what, what's happening? But you forget about that. Immediately after camp is done, you forget about how all of that is so materialistic. And that is just such a big or huge example for my personal life. There are so many things in my life that just, you know, aren't the best just for whatever reason, whether it's like, you know, clothes, cars, my housing situation, financial, all of that, whatever it can be. But all of that is materialistic and none of that really matters. At the end of the day, we're called to make disciples and everything that we have is pushing us forward to do that. So at the end of the week, we checked in with the, uh, the TLs and you know, they're all super excited um, and they're like, I get it. We get why you're here because the students. That's what drives us, it's the students. The students that show up and you guys heard from everyone and, and I just also want to brag on these students. I know they're in front of, the, they're on stage, and maybe they're, maybe it's the first time on stage, but I saw each one of these students at different points over the week just going 110%. And that's what I love about the camp is that we get to walk around and be at different places at different times. Um, for example, Lonnie, he was always, after big worship, him and his family group were just like in the staircase of a, a building, and he was always yelling my name. It was super awesome. Timothy, he was right across the hall from us. Got to check in with him almost all the time. The middle schoolers, we don't get to interact much because we kind of separate, but when we're transitioning late night, so fired up. I don't know who their TL was on the hall, but I'm so glad that they got to deal with that. But they were having a really, really good time. And so, I don't know, it's awesome. So I want to share a little bit of some stuff that I, you know, post-camp stuff. As much as the students encourage us, or as much as we get to encourage the students, they definitely encourage us. And, and that's something that, you know, it's just evident through, through their lives. Um, and let me tell you this, church. The church environment is obviously different than camp, right? You wake up, breathe, and just eat together with your families. You do everything together with your families, and that's what we call the small groups. But they need follow-up from the local church. They really need you guys when they come back. Because we talk about these spiritual highs, we talk about, you know, just being on fire, but I think a lot of that has to do with how they're received when they come back home. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously we can tell that this church doesn't have 500 plus people in it. That's okay. Just with the people that are in here, let's pour into them. Let's continue to motivate and encourage them. And I know that it's different because some of you guys have seen some of these students ever since they were younger and they've grown up. So maybe you look at them in a different way. But what I love about camp is that usually our students that we have are students that don't go to our church. Why is that? Because we don't know anything about them, right? They might be the worst student at their church. I don't know that, and I don't care about that, right? Because it doesn't matter. We want to pour into them. So these students really need that, and I say that because as I'm talking, my kids are texting me. Uh, they're talking about how worship just isn't the same at their church. Because you saw the videos. Yeah, the, the production over there, maybe it's a little bit louder, maybe it's a little bit bigger just different settings, but the students want to feel the love, the love that they got. And, you know, while some of them might have physical parents, maybe a mom, maybe a dad, it's the church members that really add to that love. What I really loved about camp is meeting kids that weren't in my, my family group. Uh, just the power of a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I wrote that down because during late night, you know, a couple hours after dinner, they sell Chick-fil-A sandwiches, about $6, I think. But I remember going and just buying one and buying an extra one. Who can I give it to, right? Who can I make their night? And so all of that is just super, super awesome. Uh, my students this year, I'm in purple group, so that's juniors going up to be seniors. Um, we have some really good conversations. Just being real, like Jonathan said, I like those colors because they split you up amongst what you're going through. And with the seniors or upcoming seniors, it's like, hey, what are you doing with your last year in high school? 
right? What are you going to do to leave your legacy? What are you going to do to to just share Christ? This might be the last time you see some of your friends, right? As much as we love our school friends, I mean, when you leave high school, you don't keep up with a ton of them. And so what are we going to do? Um, so we talk, talked about a lot of things at Big Church or the Big Worship Session. We talked about Barnabas. We talked about uh, clarifying doubt, which some, some students talked about. We talked about choosing faith. Um, we talked about Jesus casting out demons. Uh, but the one that stuck out to me is what a couple of them have shared. Choose faith even when you don't feel it. We c- we're going to come back home, and we are home, students, and you're not going to feel the same energy that you felt at camp. And that's just normal because we're not waking up, you know, early. I don't like waking up early, as a couple of you guys probably know this, but for camp because my kids are like, they call you dad and they call you mom. So just they're like, hey, dad, like, when is breakfast? And I'm like, I guess it's at 730. Like, sure, I'll be there. But because they want someone to show up. What time is lunch? All right, we'll take showers, show up at 1145. What time is dinner? Like, they're always asking, when are we going to be together? Um, and I share this with Sunday school and Man, this just hit me so hard. Um, some of the students that I had in my family group didn't have such a great, you know, home life. Uh, one of them specifically was raised, is being raised by her grandmother. Uh, mother walked out when she was really young. And dad remarried and has moved away. And this is her first time at Impact, too. And she was really scared. She didn't really know what, what, you know, what to expect. Um, she opened up and shared that with us Wednesday night. So I talked to her and I tell her, hey, you know, thanks for being here. Um, I, it's unfair, right? Life is unfair. And I hate saying that because you just, you know, you don't deserve that, right? Like these just students. And she gives me a hug and she's just like, thank you for being the mom and dad I never had. And man, that hit, that hurt. <laughs> and it's just it's powerful what camp can do, but it's not so much the camp itself, it's the power of Jesus. It's the power that they get to see Jesus through us. And, you know, she even shared to this group, thank y'all for being the brothers and sisters that I didn't have. And so many come from different backgrounds. I had a student that was a pastor's kid, right? And I was like, hey, what's up, PK? And she got to share and open up, right? And so it's just really awesome that all of these students come together to this one camp thanks to you guys, right? Thanks to you guys for supporting and encouraging the students. Let me tell you that your work here does not go unnoticed. Trust me, it does not go unnoticed. Right, the students that were telling me, well, you know, they just look at me weird when I put my hands up, or they look at me weird when I'm jumping up and down, or they look at me weird when I'm doing this. And I'm like, unfortunately, yes. Because, you know, as we age, we, we think differently, but guys, these students, they need the encouragement from you guys. And so I really wanna challenge you all to, to encourage them. It's so easy to put pictures of missionaries on, on the TV, in your pamphlets, right? Send a donation, do this. We have missionaries right here that are going to school every single day. Pick one, write a name, put it on your fridge, pray for them every day. It's a hard, it's a hard world, we know that. And we know that the school environment in today's day is one of the hardest environments to be in. And here they are being a light. So again, thank you all for just allowing us to, to be here. And I'm so glad these students got to go. I hope they're ready to go back next year, if so. Um, but it's, it's been a good time. Thank you, church. Uh, y'all are awesome. Do you guys want to go back next year? I'd hope so. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for sending these kids. It's been a blast. Like every single, almost all of these kids, every night we're running up to the stage during worship and we're singing and screaming their hearts out. Um, I think my favorite part of the week was, <laughs> was screaming out Lonnie and JJ's names and embarrassing them in their family groups during lunch. I even, I, 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 me and my husband had 11 kids this week. So during lunch, I made sure every single one of them would yell out their name at the same time. It was great. And by the, by the last two days, Lonnie started screaming mine back. So it worked, um, but yeah, Impact is an incredible family. Sunday, we, all, we three got there, and even on Sunday, you're put right, right in. Like, you're decorating the rooms, whether they're half done or not. Um, we get our own worship without to get to know everyone, and then Monday, they are thrown right in, but because of how welcoming everybody is, you're not out of you're you're not at all out of place. 
Um, and I'm proud of all of these kids for how well they did everything. Um, we had schools and they had their own worship services and then we did have big worship and they pretty much covered everything so I don't have to say that much. That's why I went last. <laughs> um, but I know I spoke with some of them throughout the week and they all want to come back. I hope they do go back next year. I know I do. And I'll be honest and say, I think blue's the best primary color, honestly. <laughs> like, I mean, I know we didn't have anybody in blue, which sucks, but it was pretty great. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think everybody covered everything pretty well. Impact is an extremely loving place. Everybody there is welcoming. Nobody, nobody there is ever rude to you, which I know a lot of my kids that I had were loved, loved that fact. A lot of, every time we talked with them in small group, they always mentioned how nobody judges them there. That was a big thing they always mentioned. Nobody judges me here. I love it here. On the drive home, I kept seeing the text notifications in our little family group chat being like, I miss you guys. I can't wait for next year. I saw a message earlier that was, I can't wait for next year. We gotta have a family reunion. These kids love it there. Like, it is so influential to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, church, thank you so much. And I, y'all were able to hear all the hearts um, of our amazing kids. And as Jared said, and as Marina said, none of this would be possible without you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your support financially and also prayers. Uh, thank you so much for that because these kids really needed it this week. And I know now that camp is done. Um, I joke and, and people joke at me, Jonathan, your, your job starts. I'm like, no, it's not my job. It's our job as a church to continue to pour into these kids to really just, uh, just check on them, uh, just love on them. Uh, if you ever see any of them in the hallway doing what they're not supposed to do, please get onto them. <laughs> please get onto them and be like, hey, you're at church, don't do that. Um, no, but also just love on them because as Jared said, um, they just really need to be loved on. Um, doesn't matter what what uh, background we come from or however, whatever our family situation is, um, just loving them, loving on them is is amazing. So if you ever see them, on the just walking, running, whatever, just talk to them, get to know them, because uh, they really do appreciate it, even though they're still teenagers and they might not be very respectful sometimes, but they still need to be loved, and, and that is amazing. Um, also, I think that one of the greatest thing that was kind of said really fast, but we're really, we're really going to acknowledge it right now, is throughout camp, we got one of our students that got saved, and that is the amazing thing. Come here. Um, she's been here for with us maybe a year and a half, right? A year. I know she's been here for youth for a year, and she got invited last year by her friend, uh, Caitlin, to VBS. And I know VBS is starting today, so just look at the importance of VBS and the importance of friends that because of VBS, we were able to have her and then she still stayed uh, and then w and she went to camp and then she gave her life to God because of her friends of VBS everything that you guys do so if you're teaching VBS uh, this week thank you so much and please continue to do that because you may not see the fruit this year but you will definitely be able to see it and to to experience it and just to be able to to be uh, just just a part of their life and I will Give this back to Pastor Doug. Thank you. Awesome. So many great things have been mentioned today, but there's one thing that I want to ask. Marina, you said husband? <laughs> <laughs> Just for a week? What? What, what is this? No. Um, I, you know, I was excited when, uh, when Jonathan was telling me just how, um, ex just how good the week was going. And that he told me on Friday that he thought that, that um, it was going to be a great service to get them to, to come and to, and to share with their church family um, about their week. And I thought, awesome, great, I have next week's sermon written already. 
But, uh, but no, this, this was awesome. One of the things they kept mentioning time and time again was family. Um, how important family is and having that family environment and, how, and them having it amongst themselves, but also having it within the context of the church. And that's recognizing, um, especially when you take on uh, what uh, Paul said to Titus, just how important it is for the older to, to love on, to train up, and to encourage the younger, and, and how that reciprocates itself uh, to, back towards to the older. And our responsibility to love these kids and to, and to help train these kids to love Jesus and to follow Jesus in, in, in all the ways of their life and all. And I, I want to thank you, and I know that it's been mentioned uh, by a couple of them already, just how you, your generosity has, has helped make this week happen, or at least helped... Uh, decrease the cost for the, the kids to be able to go uh, through rent a youth and through just donations and all and, um, and and that support and that sponsorship just helped take that 350 to 400 dollar price tag and really knock it down um, uh, for them and so thank you all for that but going beyond just uh, the, the the financial aspect but what like what Tim, uh, what Jonathan was saying just a moment ago um, just, you know, when you see them in the halls or just take a time to go downstairs on a, on a Wednesday night even and just to check in on them or and when you see them, you know, greet them in the hallway, say hi to them in the hallway, love on them uh, as you do one another uh, in the hallway as well and just let them know just how, uh, how important it is, their involvement here at the church as well. And as it was mentioned, Vacation Bible School. You know, a lot of the, uh, the ministry and the youth ministry is encouraged by what, has, what takes place for Vacation Bible School. So who knows what's going to come out of this week even to help encourage and bless the youth group going into the next school year. So I just want to thank you all for your support there, kids. I just want to thank you all for sharing. Uh, each and every one of you had something to share, and that was awesome to be able to hear that as well. So thank you all so much. And now we're, we get to, um, we're going to go home take an afternoon nap, and then come back tonight uh, uh, energized and ready for Vacation Bible School. Amen? Uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, you have your bulletins. You know what's, what we have coming up. Uh